Good morning. Welcome to Current Scam World. In this video, let us study turbidimetry. What is nephelometry and its principal instrumentation and their applications? What are their applications in detail? First of all, both turbidimetry and nephelometry are both related techniques. They are related to each other. Their instrumentation are common. Only the deduction direction is different. For example, let us see here what is turbidimetry. It is the measurement of transmitter light by the suspended particle in the dis in the direction of incident beam. Okay. Whereas nephelometry is the measurement of scattered light by the suspended particles at right angles to the perpendicular to the incident beam. Okay. And turbidimetry is used for the determination of high concentrations of suspensions whereas it is used for low concentration suspensions. Okay. The principle the same the basis of turbidimetric analysis is the measurement of intensity of the transmitted light as a function of concentration of suspended particles in the solution or in air. Okay, we can measure air pollution, water pollution, etc. In nephelometry, the basic principle is the measurement of the intensity of the scattered light as a function of concentration of the dispersed, dispersed phase. Okay. Okay, now let us see the schematic diagram of turbidimetry and nephelometry instrumentation. Okay, and with its animation. This is the light source and it gives out light. It is allowed to the light beam is allowed to pass through the filter and then through prism which disperses the light into different wavelengths and then it is passed through an exit filter, another filter which converts, which allows only one particular wavelength, for example green light wavelength, it allows only one wavelength. It is the light is allowed to pass through the monochromatic light. Okay, this is polychromatic light, and these three act as monochromators. These three act as monochromators, they convert polychromatic into monochromatic uh, light with the only a single wavelength. The monochromatic light is allowed to pass through the cell with the suspended particles. Okay. The transmitted light is detected using a photo detector, photo multiplier tube. In turbidimetry, the transmitted light is measured in the direction of the incident beam. Whereas in nephelometry, you see the scattered light is measured in the direction perpendicular to the incident beam. Now let us see what are the components in the, in the instrumentation of uh, nephelometry and turbidimetry. It consists of light sources, mercury lamp, or tungsten lamp under low pressure the excitation of mercury atoms is done by electrical discharge to emit light rays or tungsten lamp it contains a piece of tungsten wire which is heated to emit visible light okay and filters the light is allowed to pass through two filters and one prism they are called monochromator okay this will convert polychromatic light to monochromatic light these three and sample cells 
a cell with the rectangular cross section is preferred and it should be transparent okay and then detector the most commonly used detector detectors are photo multiplier tubes okay let us now see how it works what is the working principle of uh, turbidimetry and flowmetry the photo detector is placed in direction in the in direct line with the incident light and the solution that is 0 degree or 180 degree angle for turbidimetry for nephelometry the photo detector is placed perpendicular to the incident beam that is it may be 45 degree to 90 degree angle the light source should emit a wavelength in the near ultraviolet range 290 to 410 nanometer the photo detector measures a decrease in the signal or reduction in the light intensity as a result of either absorption or scattering of incident light. We are based on relay mean scattering. What is relay scattering? If the particle size is less than the wavelength of light, then it is called relay scattering. And what is mean scattering? If the particle size is greater than the wavelength of the light, then it undergoes mean scattering. Okay, now let us discuss the theory of nephelometry and uh, turbidimetry. Both are based on Bede Lambert's law. A similar equation is used here. This is according to Bede Lambert's law A equal to absorbance equal to epsilon Cl equal to log I0 by IT where I0 equal to intensity of the incident light, IT equal to intensity of the transmitter light. Okay. This is absorbance, here turbidance, here it is turbidance due to scattering or absorption of light okay. or um, concentration of C is the concentration of suspended material in the solution or in air and K equal to turbidity constant, B equal to path length. Here molar absorption coefficient, here it is turbidity constant. Now let us see the important applications of uh, nephelometry and turbidimetry. It is useful for determination of particle size, size of the colloidal particle or suspended particle and also to calculate the average molecular weight. From the concentration we can calculate the average molecular weight. Air quality analysis, water quality analysis, measure pollutants in air, water, etc. Then determination of end point in precipitation titration and we can follow the bacterial growth in liquid nutrient medium which is transparent. Okay, When you add bacteria, it will start growing and it will become turbid once the bacteria grows. So the growth of bacteria can be monitored uh, by using these techniques and then determination of enzymatic activity. Activity of the enzymes can be studied whether the enzyme is active or not. For example, let us take in a cell uh, starch solution. Starch solution is a suspension. It is not a true solution. So it will undergo scattering. Okay. Now when you add amylase enzyme to starch solution the turbidity will disappear because of the um, starch is converted into sugar simple monosaccharide which is soluble which gives true solution so the enzymatic activity can be studied by using these techniques similarly uh, lipase activity can be studied by using these methods uh, let us take oil or fat in the cell okay and it is turbid add and add, you add please uh, you add a lipase enzyme okay and on adding this enzyme it will convert oils and fats into glycerol and fatty acids which are soluble 
okay so the turbidity is cleared and we can thereby we can measure the lipase activity so the decrease in turbidity is directly proportional to lipase activity or amylase activity determination of proteins especially immunoglobulins in serum and, and other biological fluids okay and then determination of concentrations of individual serum proteins by using antibodies by using antibodies for example hemoglobin when it binds with its antibody and it becomes turbid because of the increase in size on binding with the antibody the size increased therefore it undergoes it gives scattering and become turbid captoglobin c reactive protein antitrypsin using antibodies specific for each of the protein thank you for watching please share and subscribe thank you again